Hey, what's up? I'm just trying to do a review on this finally. I was going to do something fancy, a little more edits, trying to up my video game a bit more, but I'm just so busy these days, I just don't have time and barely have time for this. So I'm just squeezing, squeezing it in while I can, um, just to get something out there. Anyways, uh, this is my review on the Zen 103 Classic 12, and so the 50th Anniversary Limited Edition. Um, came out, at least, it was released almost towards the end of last year, 2021, and did a pre-order, sold out like in just a couple of days, uh, it's limited to 600 pieces, um, and I finally got it around, I believe somewhere in early December of uh, 2021, and yeah, it's a really nice piece, Let's get this closer up in hand. And um, it's basically uh, a reissue of a wash they've done. They've done something similar to this, a Classic 12, I believe, uh, several years ago. But uh, what they've done uh, on this 60th anniversary to improve it is, um, I think they added this this part of the dial uh, onto, you know, it's just, usually it just says Zen, but they added this uh, line of text where it's manufactured in Frankfurt in German and uh, there are applied indices. I believe the dial is also a, a nice like deep, they say it's radiant but I don't really catch a whole lot of radiance from it but it's more definitely a very deep glossy black and um, what else can I say? Uh, it's a nice, also there's a new ceramic bezel. Um, that's one thing that they didn't do before. I think uh, actually having these, you see around the sub dials, there's also these fine polished uh, rims around around them. That looks good. Uh, what else can I say? Yeah, it should be numbered on the back, limited to 600. And this one should be, I believe it's 148.04, 86 out of 600. So we're going to just get into the specs real quick. Uh, this is 41 millimeters case. And uh, the width or the thickness is 17. But that's including the, you can see it, the uh, domed sapphire on top as well as on the bottom sapphire crystal. So if you take that into account, I would say that this is at least 2 millimeters perhaps on top. So on bottom, so I think the actual case itself is basically about roughly 13 to 14 millimeters thick. And then they do some tricks with beveling and cutting it and kind of subdividing the case into different sections so it doesn't look like one large slab. And you'll see in a moment, it works pretty well, even on my about a seven inch wrist. I think it's just a little bit under, at least my left wrist is, which I wear this on. But let's go on with the specs. It's 47.5 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, I'm not sure if that's including, I'm getting these specs off of their website, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's including these uh, female uh, end length pieces. They don't completely bend down. They, are, they do bend down some, but I think it's because of the bracelet. This gets stopped right there. It doesn't keep it come under like some other ones do. Anyways, uh, inside, it's a Salida SW510. It's automatic movement. And it's pretty nicely decorated, as you can see. There will be, it's really directional uh, winding, so uh, you may get some uh, rotor wobble or just that spinning, but personally, that doesn't even bother me. I've been used to that, and I kind of like it, actually. Um, it's kind of neat how fast it spins sometimes, seemingly endlessly. But this way, this is something, uh, the watch is just built so well that I think it feels very solid, so any of that rotor motion doesn't really transfer through, at least I don't think so. Not much sound either. I don't know if you can hear that anything 
But anyways, that's the movement. Blue screws. It's a bit of decorating work. Not overly, but it's a good looking movement, I think. Continuing on, it's 27 joules. The power reserve is 48 hours. Again, I was mentioning this is a limited edition to 600 pieces total. And uh, this is a 200 meter uh, water resistance. And uh, it's got screw down crown, screw down pushers. And uh, let me actually get this thing going. Well, actually, let's set the time to a better position. There's winding action. Somewhere right around here, right? Oh, that time passed by. And uh, see the hands move a little. What else can I say about this? It's um, made of 316 L stainless steel. Very common, but nicely cased. It's actually the cases. If you ever had a Zen 104, it's actually very similar in case profile. It's just a bit thicker. I mean, those are 41 millimeters as well, but this is obviously going to be thicker because of the chronograph movement. But um, it actually, you know, wears still pretty well. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, this has a date down at the 430. I think it's pretty well done. I don't mind having a date as long as it's well done. It's very evenly placed right at 430. And there's nothing fancy that's drawing your attention to it so it's, it's just there but you got all these nice details around it that just pop out anyways and that just kind of sinks to the background and basically disappears for the most part um yeah i don't have a problem with that and what else As i mentioned there's a ceramic bezel it is a 12 hour bezel and it is has really nice ball bearing action it's bi-directional this very smooth and just clicks right into place. I hope you can hear that how it sounds too. It's not loomed. And uh, actually the color that's on here that's in the numbers and I think the uh, a little bit of the loom or and the subdials are kind of matching this color. It's not a, actually a stark white. Hopefully it's coming through. It's actually kind of an off-white. They call it uh, chamois. And uh, I think a chamois cloth for that color would be a little bit more saturated. Uh, not a whole lot, but I would think it would be a warmer color. At least when I think of chamois cloths, like to clean, polish your car, get it dry. Um, there's definitely a more tan color, but I'm glad they didn't go that much into it. It's just very subtle, um, a little off-white, and it's not like trying to be Fotina. But in some sense, if you look at it in a certain way, uh, because it's not bright white, it can kind of get this uh, sense of being aged slightly, even though this, this is a brand new watch. But, you know, it just softens the contrast, which is nice. And uh, what else is there? Obviously, this is made in Germany, of course. It's in. And uh, let's see if it's going enough. I might as well just get the uh, chronograph running just to show you. So, go ahead and screw it. And these don't add any water resistance. And they don't take any take away any water resistance when you unscrew them. It's going to still be 200 meters water resistant. These just keep you from pushing them while you are in water so you don't uh, introduce any water intrusion. And here we go. It goes really nicely. Nice snap. Let's see. Is there really a jump, you think? 
I was told for these type of movements that are basically about juice space, the best thing to do is when you push it, don't push it quick and release quick. Push and hold it down. I see. Does it actually jump more of you? Not hard to tell, huh? Let's see if it's in the marker. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I thought they said, some people said that it makes it a smoother action. Yeah, maybe. It seems like it. So once this goes around, this is your 30 minute counter. This is your 12 hour counter. And this is the running seconds over here. We'll just keep that going. See this tick over there, and then obviously this goes by. This would tick over. Actually, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I don't usually <laughs> run my phonographs for more than an hour, anyways. But I imagine after it's hit, uh, I mean, once it goes around once, it's thirty. Then you see this hand go to that half marker, so that indicates that's thirty minutes are gone, and that would be one hour, obviously. I wonder if it just, it looks like it's not really, well, I haven't run this long enough, but I'm curious if it's actually a slow movement, or will just snap over once that half hour is up. I forget, but anyways. Yeah, so this, um, this is a really nice watch, and I'm glad I was lucky enough to get one. Oh, they d did mention this in here. Somewhere, but uh, there is mm -hmm. I gotta look for that. I know there's somewhere that mentions that uh, the technology that's in here. There is AR, like Oregon. Yeah, here we go. It's waterproof and red. Pressure resistant up to 20 bar. So that means there's also, besides water resistance, it's also air pressure resistant. So I think also, like, and also resistant to a low pressure. So if you get a sudden decompression, like you're flying, because this is a pilot watch actually, uh, even though it's got kind of like dive specs. Um, so it can risk water and as well as sudden decompression, low pressure. And uh, so your crystal won't pop up or anything like that. And it also says it's equipped with AR dehumidifying technology to keep it free from fogging and keep it dry inside and it'll last longer. So if it has that AR, the AR is like argon gas, at least that's what they were using before. But I hear more recently they switched the gas to, oh, I forget what it is. It's not, it's not argon anymore something else but there's also this uh, capsule here that you see on the side and it screws in and it'll turn it's white now but it'll turn over time it may turn blue when uh, it helps to absorb some of the additionally to help absorb uh, some of the moisture uh, that might possibly get into the watch to keep it free of any moisture so if, it, if this starts to get too saturated like somehow you get a lot of water in over time it'll eventually turn blue. See, so it kind of starts off like this, a pale blue, it's not actually white. And uh, I think, well, it should be white. And then if it goes here, I think it says 25, this is 50%, this will be 75%, and then this is uh, completely saturated when it hits this blue. So it'll look like, like that from the side, but it starts off white. So, and then you can get these replaced, but obviously you need to go it into a service center. Um, I'm trying to see. So this is a drying capsule. But I don't think this is, I think the capsule was made out of something else. So 
I'm assuming that if they say AR dehumidifying technology, it has to be um, AR is like sensor arc, I guess. So you see that on the uh, some of the watches, there's like a little, I think like a red AR with a circle around it on the dials usually. Uh, this one doesn't have that. I don't know if this, this didn't do it for this model because they wanted to keep it clean and classy. But anyways, I just wanted to tell you that. Um, and other than that, this is obviously the the uh, chronograph stop and start, or start and stop. This is the reset, and this is not a flyback chronograph, unfortunately, but that would probably cost even more if it were. But uh, you just um, stop it, and then you just, it just snaps right back, just like that. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but basically the first crown position basically sets the date, quick set, and then the next one will hack it, and then you set the time, obviously. And that's pretty it, much it. I mean, you handled chronographs before, you know, that's basically what you get. Uh, what I was going to say, it's a nice case. Got crown guards, although <laughs> you got these pushers here, so they kind of act as crown guards in a way, too. Uh, so I'm not sure how much this will add to it, but that's, that's fine. I don't mind it. It's grippy enough. It's not the biggest crown, but it is grippy enough. Um, just love the case. I mean, I like the 104, and as you know, I've owned two two white dial ones. But this, uh, the movement was better regulated than my second one. That's why I sold the first one. It was a little bit too slow for my taste, but the second one was definitely was better. So the case profile is very much the same. It's also high polished, like all around, basically. This is uh, the stock, uh, well, not the stock, but this is a um, an official Zen uh, H-Link bracelet. Stainless steel. It is brushed primarily, but high polished in the in the center links. Uh, what else? Three micro adjusts. Dive extension, which is pretty much useless. I, mean, I never use that, especially something this that much. I mean, I don't go diving, and this is way too much if you're just trying to, if you got like a swollen wrist to try to ease it up. That just make the watch slip off your wrist altogether. But uh, I'm a bracelet guy, so I had to get something that to goes with it. I'm not sure if this needed to be specially ordered, but it seemed like, even though the case should be the same as the 104, but they specifically have one for the 103, which is this. So maybe the perhaps it's slightly different in shape and perhaps where the holes are placed compared to a 104. So I'm not sure if they're truly interchangeable or not. Um, but I just made sure when I got this, I also ordered it with um, the bracelet uh, while I was waiting for it and to get it all at once because when I slap I know I like things on a bracelet but it does come with two straps these are the default ones hopefully that's showing up okay this is like a pig skin I believe and it's kind of matte it's textured it's like this really nice uh, dark army green I guess uh, it's kind of padded but kind of you see it, it does thin and taper down Nice quality, nice, pretty supple, it's good quality. No quick release though, but um, that's what it came on originally out of the box. And it also came with a pair of uh, like a black crocodile textured. It's not genuine crocodile or alligator. This has that look, it is padded, contrast stitching. And uh, this is does it definitely feel stiffer compared to this guy. Yeah, this guy is just softer but this one you can see it's more it's more rigid but i think it could be pretty nice if you do give it a chance and break it in and it does work and i've had several other strap pairings just check my other videos so the watch you strap in series to see what else i put on this um looks really good on a lot of straps it's kind of a strap monster and so is that enough about this watch let's get it on rest Oh, wristwatch check real quick, in case you didn't see, I am wearing my, kind of a new one, the, um, I think it's SBDG, is it SRDG, oh my god, I can't even remember the name of it, but this is the uh, Save the Ocean 
a special edition. They made a, a monster version of this too, but similar dial. Kind of this Arctic, it's got this frost dial. I guess it's kind of like, like the Grand Seiko frost dial a bit, but it's just supposed to be, uh, yeah, kind of a frosty dial with the penguin feet. Thing is, you don't actually see it. I think it shows up a lot more in camera, but in real life, the feet are pretty subtle unless you catch it just right, which is good. It actually looks pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you know, the dial, just the texture, we got without getting too distracted by the, the feet. But, you know, I'm all for a good cause. And this is the Antarctic edition. Um, yeah, I really love the tuna designs. But we're here to talk about Zinn. So we're going to put this on a wrist, which is about just under 7 inches. I always say 6.875. It's uh, about an eighth inch over 6 and 3 quarters or one eighth inch under seven inches. So that's where I came up with that number. But as you can see, yes, this has obviously some wrist presence, but I think it should, and I don't mind. It's a nice piece, and I think to show it off, why not? Besides, I do have other watches, even chronographs that are thinner, uh, lower profile, but I don't mind one that looks cool it's kind of beefy but it's not overly and i think it works and the 104 case works really nicely because it does do a hug and at least angle around my wrist pretty decently it doesn't leave a lot of gap i mean if you go like this yeah but who puts their arm like out like this right you're just pushing it off but usually you relax what you're doing Said was in just nice. I mean, you know, something is, they think of 17 to think, oh my god, that's a monster on the road. Oh, it's going to be like a mountain jutting off the wrist, but not really. I mean, I'm going to try to back this up a little bit. Maybe out here. So anyways, I think it works pretty nicely. Um, it's comfortable. There's nothing here ever really hits the back of my hand. I think I have this perfectly sized for my wrist too. And uh, yeah, dig it. And it's basically got super lumen over. I'm not sure what the kind of um, lumen formula they're using, but it's pretty decent. It glows green, and um, you can check this out in a moment. Let's take this off. And let's see, I'm going to turn off the lights, see if we can check out the loom. My focus, there we go. It's nice, good symmetry on this. You basically have loom on all the markings. Of course, the nine, three, and six are a little bit shorter because of the sub dials that are close to those uh, locations. But otherwise, um, I think you can get your bearings pretty easily. I mean, you know, you know, it's pretty easy to tell which side is up, especially when it's on the wrist, which you probably the most time you're going to read it. All right, not bad. And it does last pretty well. Um, it's nothing like Seiko. 
if you compare it to my monster or my, my monster my tuna um there's definitely more real estate on the tuna in terms of the size of the markings and everything um but when they all dim down you know how good loom even the best loom most looms once they dim down to a certain level it's not, um they kind of hold steady around there at that lower glow level but uh with that in mind it's it's plenty enough for me to read throughout the night uh pretty much all the way to morning so provided it's dark enough if it's bright then yeah the effect isn't going to be there but for the most part in pitch black situations all the way through basically sunrise i found that this lasts just fine okay i'm going to turn back on the lights okay so um I'm just trying to close this up here. So, um, in conclusion, I guess, um, yeah, this was not inexpensive. I think after taxes and whatnot, um, what did this? I'm trying to remember what did this start off at. Uh, must have been pretty close to three thousand, I think, off the top of my head. And then the bracelet itself ain't cheap either, which was probably at least close to another three or so. Uh, well, yeah, it's not uh, an inexpensive watch, but I think um, if you want a nice, high-quality German-made watch, classic, versatile, pretty much. I mean, yeah, it's not going to go under any sleeves, cuffs, at least not if you wear them tight. But, you know, I'm thinking if you, if you got those extra buttons on your cuffs, which sometimes they do, there's like two sets. Uh, set it on the wider one, then I think you'd be able to get it through uh, uh, over your wrist. Just no problem. But anyways, um, lovely details on this. Uh, actually, true limited edition. Celebrating 60th anniversary, uh, it's a design that they've had in the past, not just the one they did a few years ago, but even way back in the vintage one. Um, I forget which video it is, but there is a video where this guy was comparing it to, you know, the early ones. Um, had like a timing bezel instead, I believe. And yes, some people do say that this is kind of like a, a Hoyer um, Octavia, I think, right? <laughs> Since, you know, I mean, there's lots of different versions of the Octavia too, but I do see a version that's very similar to this. But I think there's enough on here that makes it different. Um, and for a very similar look, I believe this costs, even though this price of this isn't cheap, it, I believe it's a lot significantly less than uh, the Hoyer counterpart, which I'm pretty sure it's almost doubled this price. Is it double the the watch? I don't know. I think it does have more of an in-house movement. And there's some other things about it that are pretty nice too. But uh, I don't know. I wanted a Zen back in my collection. And I uh, love pandas. And this is a nice reverse panda. Um, you know, it's special. You're not going to see too many of these out there. Uh, there's definitely a cult following. And I figure... If or when I ever decide I wanted to sell it, it didn't hold their value very well. And this being limited edition, and I think pretty sought after by collectors. I mean, I know people, there's definitely a demand for this still. Can at least get back what I paid for it. Um, I'm hoping maybe a little bit more if I did have to sell it. At least uh, uh, parting with it wouldn't hurt as much if it did get back, uh, if it did pay for itself and then some. For having owned it anyways um but that's a different topic uh if you have any questions let me know otherwise uh yeah i uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, i tried to make this as complete and quick as possible but i'm still about at 30 minutes so time to sign off thanks for watching and uh i'll catch you in the next one